So let's review what we've got in our project. We've got two machines. One, which is a Linux box, has SAP HANA 1 already configured. And we have another machine, which is a Windows box, which is going to be used to install our various clients on it. Now, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to install PuTTY on our Windows client. We'll then use PuTTY to access the content and do further configuration of our SAP Panel 1 instance. Now there's a small issue. Um, remember we're using a PEM file. Well PuTTY can't really use a PEM file in terms of uh, as a key pair. So what we're going to install is another tool called PuTTYGen which is essentially going to convert this file to a PPK file. Once we've got the PPK file Will then PuTTY will then use that PPK file, and then it will use the file to be able to log into our SAP Panel One instance. So essentially, we'll log in as the root user. We won't need to type in a password because we'll be using this PPK file as our password. Now, once we've logged in, we're going to do a few tasks. So the first task we're going to do is we're going to rename the password of our instance. Why? Because you might want to you might want to make the system more secure. The default password is manager, but you might want to make it more secure. So I'm going to show you how to change the password using PuTTY on your SAP Panel 1 instance. The second task is I'm going to show you how to stop and start your servers. So again we're going to use PuTTY. We're going to log in as a specific user and we're going to start the various servers on, servers on our SAP Panel 1 instance so we can start to use SAP Panel 1. So why don't we go ahead and get on with the demonstration videos. In this video we're going to look at installing PuTTY and PuTTYGen on a Windows box so that we can connect to a Linux box which contains SAP HANA. This was created with Amazon Web Services and is also known as SAP HANA 1. So to do this what we need to do firstly is download the two tools that we're going to use to connect to that Linux server. So we can do this by launching a browser and the first tool we're going to download is a tool called Putty Gen. So if I just launch a browser, go to Google and do a search for Putty Gen. And you can just go to the PuTTY download page. And if I scroll down, we're going to again download that PuTTY generator. So if I scroll right down here, we should see we've got PuTTY gen and we can access it from here. Here we go. We've got PuTTY gen here, which we can download. So I'm going to select it. And we can just run it. We're only going to use this tool once. So I'm just going to execute this and run it. Now we need to generate a what's called a PPK file. So it's a private key file. We've got a PEM file, but we need to generate this PPK file for PuTTY to use. So we need to get that PEM file on this machine. Now if you remember, the PEM file or the key pair file was the file that was downloaded to your machine when you created the key pair. You can actually access this via text. So a simple way to do this is on your Windows box, just launch Notepad. And again, I'm going to go on my Windows box. I'm going to go and get that PEM file. So I'm going to go, I placed it in a Dropbox. And this is the PEM. I'm going to open this up again with TextPad. I'm going to copy the whole private key. And then I'm simply going to paste that back into my Windows box here as text. And I'll save this as, I'll give it the same name. So I'm going to call this as a, um, I'm going to place this on my desktop. And I'm going to save it as sap underscore hana underscore academy. 
but I don't think the file has to be the same name. So I'm going to save it as this file. There we go. So now when I go to my desktop, we should see we've got that PEM file. So now to generate that private key, what we need to do is, is load that existing private key. So I'm going to load the key. We need to generate that PPK and it's on my desktop. And it is the, um, it's the administrator desktop. So I'm just going to do a start and load this PEM file. So it successfully imported the key. So I click on OK. And then all I need to do is say save private key. So I'm going to save private key yes. It's going to give it a putty private key with a PPK extension. And I'm just going to call it the same name. So sap underscore HANA Academy. And it has a PPK extension. And I'm, again, I'm saving it on my desktop. So we can close that putty key generator now. So the next thing we need to do is we need to download Putty. So to do this, I'm going to go again to a browser. We've got the same link, so I'm going to download and use Putty. So I'm going to select Putty, and I'm going to save this. I'll actually save this because you might decide to use it a few times. So I'm going to save this, and we're going to connect to our HANA system on the Linux box via Putty. So to do this, we need to do a few things. Firstly, we need to enter the machine name of where the Linux box is. And we're going to use the root user, which is called root. Again, you can find that out by going to your um, AWS console, and you can copy and paste that machine name. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. So again, I've launched my Safari browser, and I'm going to do a search for AWS. I'm going to log into my Amazon Web Service. I'm going to log into my management console, go to my EC2 virtual servers. If we go to instances, of course, we'll see we've got two running instances. One is the Linux box and one is the Windows box. And again, we want to connect to the Linux box. So I'm going to select the Linux box here and simply copy this machine name here. Right click and select copy. And then what all I need to do is I need to paste that here is my, in my host name, both the host name and the save session. Now we're going to log in as root, the root user. So I'm going to type root at, at the beginning of both the host name and the save session. And we also need to select that private key because we don't have a password for the root user. We're going to use that PPK file. So within the SSH, within the connection SSH authentication subfolder, within private key file for authentication, we're going to go ahead and select on my desktop that PPK file. I'll then go back to the top of Putty, go to session, and I'll just save that so we can reuse that later on. So now that we've done that, we don't really need the browser anymore. We can just launch and load putty. So I'm going to double click on that login. We'll be prompted that the service host key is not cached in the registry, which is fine. It means it could be there could be a problem with it in terms of security. But we trust this key, so we're going to click on yes. And you can see now, straight away, we've managed to log into our HANA system. So the first thing that you'll need to do is read uh, an agreement, a software agreement. So obviously read it. Scroll right to the bottom of the software agreement. You can just click on the space bar to get to the bottom. And to accept it, you click on Y and press return. And there we can see there we're connected to our HANA system. OK, I've just scrolled down a bit just to make a bit, make a bit of space. So. What we're going to do now is the next step. So before we actually start the servers, what we need to do is change the password of the user who is used to manage the HANA operation at the system operating level. To do this, we use the following command, which is PASSWD, and then we type HDBADM. So this is going to help us change the password. So for example, if I was to put the password manager, it's too simple. 
If I was to use the password, for example, password123, um, obviously that doesn't match, so let me just try that again. It's based on a dictionary word, so you have to use a specific complex password. So I'm going to make a password up now. And there we can see that that password was changed. So obviously enter any password that you want and obviously you might want to write that down. So again, I've just pressed return a few times just to make a bit of space. So now what we can do is we can start the users as that user, HDB admin, which has been set at the operating system level. So to do this, firstly, we need to log in as that user. So we can simply type su dash HDB ADM, press return. And now you can see we're at the HDB admin level. So this is really where you should start and stop your servers. Now to start a server, it's very simple. I'm going to do a HDB start. This will start your list of servers. So here you can see that the servers are starting up. And it normally takes a few seconds for those servers have started. So once the servers have started, we can then execute a HDB info command just to verify that the servers have started up. So what I'll do is I'll just pause while those servers are starting. So again, here we can see that those servers have started and the servers have started, but how do we ensure it? Well, we type HDB INFO. And what we're looking for are all these HDB servers to make sure that they've started. So obviously to stop HANA, you would use a HANA stop, uh, sorry, HDB stop command. So that's kind of straightforward. So now that we've actually started the servers, I'm going to show you a way in which you can change the password if you want. So to do this, we need to type the command HDB SQL and press return. So this is essentially the SAP HANA database interactive terminal. So the command to actually change your database password is as follows. So the first thing you need to do is log into that database. So the command is backslash C dash I. This is the instance number, which is zero zero. Then we're going to use dash N to name the machine. Well, we know it's on this machine, so it's, we can simply use localhost and that port, which is 30015. We then enter the user, which is system, and the default login, uh, or sorry, the default password is manager. So we would type dash P space manager, and that will log us in to our HANA system on the Linux box. So I'm not going to do this, but if you wanted to, you can simply change the password by typing alter user system password, and then you type your password, whatever you want your password to be, if you wanted to alter that user. But I'm going to leave it as um, manager, which is totally fine. Obviously, the simplest way to test that your HANA system is up is just to write a select statement. The simplest being select star from the dummy table. So I'm going to type select star from dummy and press return. And yes, in the dummy table, you have a value which is X, as you can see here. So then you can just type Q to quit. So that's obviously a very simple way to verify that your HANA system is up. So now that we've, do that, we've done that, we can exit the HDB SQL terminal. So we've logged out. We're still logged in as that SU user. But what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to stop the database because I want to show you how you would start the database after you've shut down an instance. So I'm going to run an HDB stop. Wait till the service has stopped. And then I'm going to reconnect with Putty in case, again, you shut down your server and want to obviously restart HANA. So I'll just pause the video while the servers are stopping. Now we can see the servers have stopped. So I'm going to exit the HDB ADM user. So we're back at the root level. And again, I'm going to exit the root level. So now I'm going to launch Putty again. Um, I've got it in my downloads folder. 
So I'm just going to go to my downloads folder. There we go. So I'm going to launch Putty again. But this time we're going to log in as that specific user. So again, this is in case you've shut down the Windows and the SatPanel one box. Of course, you would restart them in the AWS console. You would log in to your Windows box. You just need to go in again as root using that private key. You then would do a SU space HDM ADM, HDB ADM. And then you don't need to remember the command you can just type up because the command should be remembered so obviously it's going to be a hdb start and again that's going to start your servers so once the servers have started you can then exit um, putty and of course it's advisable that you actually shut down the hana system here or hdb stop the servers before you actually shut down both the machines within the um, um, AWS console and again there we can see that the HANA server has started and of course we can verify that with a HDB info so I'll just exit so that's a simple way to test and to start your um, SAP HANA 1 instance and to make sure that the HANA has been started on that Linux box there are many different ways to validate that the servers are up now one of the ways is to install the client connectivity software and try and connect to your HANA server. So in the next video, we're going to be downloading FTP, an FTP client, to download the SAP HANA client software onto this Windows box. And then we're going to verify that the SAP HANA database is up by using the SAP HANA Studio to connect to the Linux box where we've got our SAP HANA server. So hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed this video which showed you how to install Putty Generator to convert a key pair which is in PEM format and output it as PPK format. Then we used and downloaded Putty to connect to our SAP HANA server which was on the Linux box and then we started the SAP HANA services which were on that Linux box.